I genuinely think this is the healthiest our shopping trolley has ever looked. Dad! <laughs> oh my god! Wow! I do that again in a heartbeat. Hello everybody, how are we all? I hope you're all doing really well. Welcome back to my channel. I'm very excited to film this video because it's going to be a week-long video of a Aldi grocery food shop slash haul which is going to be full of vegan and vegetarian food and then I'm going to be doing a whole seven day a week of what we eat including vegan slash vegetarian meals, recipes and ideas. So it's going to be a really really fun one. It's very highly requested and I absolutely love filming these videos. So it's going to be a very very nice journey through Aldi. Fingers crossed they have everything we need. Um, and then also loads of recipe inspiration. So, so yeah, if you're really excited for this, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also don't forget to hit subscribe. Any new people out there, which I can't believe we've passed 9,000 subscribers now, that is crazy. Hello, hi, I'm Luke. I am a London-based, what even am I? <laughs> I make videos and put them on the internet, basically. Hi, that's me. Um, thank you for joining me on this journey. And if you are interested in recipe ideas, I will be obviously filming loads throughout the year. But obviously it is Veganuary slash Veganuary, which is what we're doing. So yes, this is the relevant video and you've stumbled across it, so hi. Um, so yeah, we are going to go to Aldi. So Zara's on her way home from work and um, she'll be here in like an hour. So it's fab. We're going to go to Aldi, do a full week's grocery shop. We've meal prepped, which is fantastic. If you check my video before uh, this one, which went live, I'll link that down below. We spent our last Sunday, which was yesterday, going through lots of recipe books, which we keep up there, um, doing a whole week's worth of meal planning. So this is here. So let me quickly show you. So we have this. This is actually from Poundland. I mean, it's not the most aesthetically beautiful thing, but it works, does the job. Um, so this evening we're going to have risotto, which is, uh, let me have a look. These are the cookbooks that we use. So. Uh, I think it was a mob kitchen one, and then Zara's also pinned some Save with Jamie ones, so they're awesome. So they're the two we're going to be doing. So we're going to have a risotto this evening, then tomorrow we're doing curry vegetable wraps. Uh, we're having a pesto gnocchi, and then we're doing a bean and pepper stew, spicy aubergines with peanuts. Um, we're going out on Saturday evening, and Sunday we're going to be making our homemade pasta with lemon and courgette linguine, and this is going to be a whole separate video, so definitely check that out. So this is our shopping list of everything that we need. Um, the only thing I feel like we might struggle to get is gnocchi. But apart from that, we've got a huge list of vegetables and some like herbs. We've got some fruit that we need to grab, some deli bits, um, some cans, and like some bread and that kind of thing. So literally, we should not veer from this shopping list. In terms of like anything else that we need, we don't need toilet paper, we don't need any cleaning products. It's literally just a wholesome Aldi food shop. And potentially some freezer items. I might just leave that blank here. But yeah, this is everything that we need. So like I say, we're gonna be going to Aldi in a second, grab our list, grab our meal plan, and hopefully they shouldn't take too long. I'm really enjoying that Aldi are now doing a lot of like less plastic. I mean, I know they are over there, but here, this is great. Right, fab. Get some berries. I'm gonna get some raspberries, yeah? Yes. Are you happy with raspberries? Yeah. I mean, yeah, raspberries, awesome. They're the ninth. What's the date today? Today's the sixth, so we only gotta eat them in three days, but that's fine. Oh my god, I love this. Yes. Should get a big one. That one's good. Do you think? Yeah. It's for the pasta that we're making on Sunday. Whenever we come to Aldi, it's a good tip to get the cardboard boxes and then you can just put all of your fruit and veg in there. You don't need to use any bags. Genius. In they go. Perfect. I genuinely think this is the healthiest our shopping trolley has ever looked, and the greenest. So Aldi's got some really good options for any vegans out there. They've got no pork sausage rolls, corn savory mini eggs. Oh, spicy tomato balls, they look like meatballs. No, they look delish. Vegan meatballs. Oh, vegan curried sweet potato meatballs. They've got some corn cocktail sausages, corn cheese free slices. Oh, and plant-based mm. sausages too, these look good. They do, don't they? And they're only one fifty nine as well. Should we get some of these and maybe put them in the freezer? Or do you think maybe hold out? Them in for another week. Yeah, that's definitely something to remember. The little curry kits that Aldi have are great as well. These tiger and curries are awesome. 
Beyond um, Vegan, but they are vegetarian, and the curry chickpeas are really good too. They've got pulses and grains as well. These are really good if you're going vegan because they're full of um, good proteins. They're awesome, and they're quite low in calories as well. Anyone doing Veganuary, these iced rings are actually accidentally vegan, which is awesome. And the cookies and cream, I'm pretty sure, are vegan too. Let's have a look. Yeah, I actually think they're vegan because they're made with soy milk. So yeah, cookies and cream. Good Oreos. These are the infamous Aldi Dromalon dupe soaps, which are meant to be really nice. Freesia and pear and pomegranate. And they've also got the nice jar candles in here too. I know you did a haul of these before and they're meant to be really nice. Dromalon dupes for $2.49. Amazing. Aldi's freezer section is really good as well. They've got these vegan no beef patties for $1.19. Vegan sausage rolls. They're one nineteen two. Oh gosh. Their corn options are really good in here as well, and it's so good in terms of price, and it's literally like £1.59. It's brilliant. The health section in Aldi is really good as well. They've got milled linseeds, the gorgy berries. These are really nice to pop on like top ones. They've also got loads of little, um, oh, they do have pine nuts. That's actually what we needed. Grab some pine nuts. These are for the gnocchi. And they've got like almonds. These are just really good to have as like snacks. Little hazelnuts. These nice little berry mixes as well. They're super tasty. I've never tried these before. These are like hike bars. I think they're quite similar to... Um, I can't remember the name of the brand. But they're really nice. I think they're vegan as well. Oh, these ones might not be. Protein packed. Yeah. Maybe give these a go. I think these are nice as well. These true bake balls are meant to be like um, the naked bars. And they're half the price as well. Maybe I'll ask if Zara wants these. Oh, salted caramel. Oh, Aldi's almond milk. Well, their soya milk is 59p. And their almond is 85, and it's so good. I need to grab some of this. Literally, this is the best in protein smoothies. It's so good, and it's only 85p. They've also got the Alcaf whole bean coffee beans for £1.89. That is so cheap for the coffee machine I've just got. 200 grams as well. What do you think? Just to try it. Let's give it a go. Our food shop in the bag. Oh yeah. I'm going to be showing you everything we got when we got home. We just need to quickly nip to Tesco to get a couple more things. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so we're just nipping into Tesco to get sweet potatoes, gnocchi and garam masala. They're the three things that uh, Aldi didn't have. Sweet potatoes they usually do, but I don't know why they didn't. I think everyone's on this. This healthy. Yeah, and cauliflower as well. They never usually have those gigantic cauliflowers, but I think that is one vegan thing everyone wants. So yeah, that's what we're in Tesco for. One thing that I um, do think is really, really good is this Oatly uh, Barista Edition. It's basically really good for hot drinks, and it's oat milk if you are doing Veganuary. It's quite expensive. It's one pound eighty versus Aldi eighty p for almond milk, but it's really good. And they've got oat chocolate milk as well, which looks nice. Okay, so we are back from Aldi, and we have. We've got a lot of groceries going on. This is everything we've got. It came to a total of 40 pounds, and then we just spent an extra three pounds in Tesco, so 43, and that's gonna do us for breakfast, lunches, and dinners for myself and Zara, so it's 21 pounds 50 each for a whole week of breakfast, lunch, and dinner, which is it's a thumbs up from me. So let's unbox all this, well, unbag all this, and see what we've got. Okay, so I've unpacked all of the groceries and I've kind of sectioned them out into like breakfasts and then we've got a whole pile of veggies going on here. These are more like seasonings and like canned bits and bobs. This is like things to go in the freezer. We've got a little bit of squash going on and then this is more like snacky bits. So that's kind of how, oh actually these aren't snacks but you know. So yeah, I thought I'd start over here. So, breakfasts completely stay the same throughout. Um, the weeks and months. We don't really have a lot of meat for breakfast at all, but obviously this is completely vegan um, and vegetarian, sorry, not vegan, uh, vegetarian. Um, so yeah, I got some of this Colombian um, whole bean coffee and it's the five strengths, so it's really awesome for my coffee machine here. I do have some in here, but it's rapidly going down because I'm absolutely loving this machine. I do need to give it a bit of a clean actually, but I thought I'd give this a try because um, it just looked really good and there's 200 grams in there, so that's awesome. So yeah. Coffee, uh, this is just the classic white bloomer village bakery bread. Um, it's only myself and Zara who live here, so we just got the half one. Um, it's vegetarian as well. I've uh, got some raspberries to have with some cereal and granola on a morning. Um, so granola bars just to have as like a quick breakfast or as a snack. 
We've got 12 free range eggs because we're going to be making um, some pasta at the weekend, as I said, some fresh pasta, um, and also just eggs to have for breakfast. As I did say, guys, this is a vegetarian food shop um, with some vegan recipes as well, so it's it's for a mix of both. Um, this is the yogurt that we tried last week, and it's absolutely delicious. It's Greek-style coconut yogurt. It's so good. The almond milk, as I said, um, two lots of regular milk. This is for my coffees because whole milk is awesome to steam, and then this is regular um, semi-skim milk for like teas and stuff. Um, I do obviously have almond milk as well in my protein shakes to try and reduce the dairy, but this lasts us a while, so yeah, maybe that can be something we work on in the future. And then this is all of the vegetables. We've got a lot going on. So we've got some mint, and that's gonna be used in a recipe coming later. We've got a pack of courgettes, we've got three courgettes. Some asparagus spears. We've got two aubergines. A huge bunch of bananas that are gonna ripen soon. A bag of bistro salad, this is just for Zara to have like lunches with and us to just bulk out some dinners. Uh, two sweet potatoes, these are actually from Tesco. Uh, we got a bag of peppers, um, some lemons, which are gonna be for a courgette pasta dish and also just to have with salads. Um, a big cauliflower, so that's gonna be for the curry cauliflower recipe we're doing. I'm gonna go through the recipes in a second, which are in this book. Uh, we've got an avocado, which we're going to use on breakfast for like avocado toast. Another pepper just to bulk out a dish. Some brown onions. And then these are just corn on the cob again, just to go as like an accompaniment. I eat a lot of food, so there's some of these bits are just to try and bulk it out. Um, in terms of herbs, we've got some fresh parsley, some basil, and some coriander, which are for recipes. Some easy peel oranges, these again are just nice to have as like a snack. These are really good. Um, and then in terms of like dry canned stuff, we got some passata, which is always good to have. Chickpeas, chopped tomatoes, uh, butter beans, pesto. Uh, Tesco, we had to get the garam masala because Aldi didn't have it. Some veggie stock cubes, these are 35 pence. So good for 12. And some parmesan, so yeah. And then, and then this is the stuff that's gonna go in the freezer. So we got some vegetable spring rolls, which we're just gonna bang in. These are just nice to have as like a snack. Um, this is going to be our Saturday treat, so we've got some pizzas, so we've got a cheese uh, pizza and a um, mozzarella and basil pizza and a garlic bread because this is like our favourite thing to eat ever. And then snack wise, we've got two types of hummus. Um, Zara picked up the sweet chilli hummus which actually does look delicious, so we've got some of that, some red pepper hummus, some of this fruit and barley juice because we absolutely love it, it's like squash, um, some pine nuts, that's going to go on one of the gnocchi dishes. Some onion and chive puff pastry twists just to dip in like the hummus, it's like a snack. Some of these mature cheddar and red onion crisps because we had these last week and they're delish. Some roasted salted peanuts because these are going to go in a uh, the curried cauliflower recipe. And then two styles of Mexican rice just to have as like a lunch. Sorry, I can take one of these to work and I'll just have them while I'm working from home. And the gnocchi that we got um, in Tesco. And that is literally everything. So I'm going to put all this away just so it doesn't start getting warm um, and then I'm going to get out the recipe for this evening which is in this cookbook here. We're going to use two cookbooks this week. The first is by Ben Liebus and it's called Mob Kitchen. Genuinely swear by this book. It's brilliant. Packed full of recipes and it's so cheap as well. Like I said, I'm going to be going through this in a second. And then um, Love Him or Hate Him, I think it's brilliant. Um, this is Mr. Oliver's five ingredient meals. Literally five ingredients and you've got yourself lunch, breakfast or dinner and cakes as well. It's brilliant. So um, yeah, I'll link these down below if you want to get your hands on either of them from Amazon. But we've already pinched some recipes. So yeah. That's the plan. So we're going to put all this away now and I'll be back with you guys in a second. This is this evening's recipe. We're going to be doing a fresh and easy greenest risotto. We need asparagus out and all that for sure. If you want to make this at home, um, this is the list of ingredients and I'm going to be showing you the method. It says it takes 45 minutes and also they give you a little Spotify recommendation as well, which is cool. Um, other ones that we are going to be making this week, we're going to be doing veggie curry flatbreads. It's Zara's choice. Very nice. I think these are actually potentially vegan. Yeah, they are. Completely vegan. Uh, what else was that? Oh. Uncle Andy's bean and pepper chorizo stew, but we're leaving out the chorizo. So this is definitely going to be coming as well. There's one more, right? Gnocchi. This is, I'm so excited about this. This is speedy pesto gnocchi. Um, vegetarian, not vegan. So there's two vegan, two veggie. And that's right, right? Yeah? Yeah, yeah? And then the last two are in here. So we're going to be making homemade pasta, which is very exciting. So this is this one. Easy lemon linguine, uh, which is going to be veggie. And then, you got it? 
There we go. Sticky teriyaki aubergine, which is vegan. So we've got three vegan dishes and three veggie dishes, which I'm so hyped about. So, perfect. Right. Speedy. No, that's not what we're doing. Risotto. Right. There we go. Okay, shout the ingredients and I'll grab them. Vegetable stock. Got. One brown onion. Uh, yeah, that's out. Two I can garlic pie. Yeah. Asparagus, right? We need asparagus. Got some yes, we have. Where's the asparagus? Oh, here we go. Asparagus, check. So this is our little herb god we've got going on over here. Please to excuse the dishes, we'll do those in a second. So this? Yeah. This is basil. <laughs> I was waiting for you, like, yeah. So this is basil, so smell it. Like Italian pizza, right? Delish, okay. Okay, I've got that. This one? What do you think this one is? It's either parsley or coriander. Yes. Yeah! <laughs> okay. It's obviously a good idea to taste them as well. What, like? Like, literally, like, uh-huh. I mean, I'd probably recommend that you also take that off, because I don't <laughs> want to eat that as well, but thank you. I don't know. What do we have that on? That's like Indian. Coriander's like Indian Oriental, so that's, oh, that's coriander. coriander, yeah. Sorry, I gave that away. And this is parsley, because it's flat. It's like a flat leaf parsley. It's like more like they fish. They smell so the same. Mm. No. Should I taste that one too? Yeah. One. Parsley, sometimes people say, is like soapy. Who eats soap? <laughs> Strange oh, walk. Like okay, so let's get cracking. Sarah's interesting choice of utensil with a stock pan, a slotted spoon. Yeah, because you can check that it's all dissolved. But how do you, how do you add that into here with another utensil? more washing up my favorite okay so in a pan we are just um slowly slowly sorting a brown onion large brown onion and two cloves of garlic and then zara has just put uh, two stock cubes and a liter of oil and water on a saucepan over there and you, the trick is to keep it warm with risotto when adding one to the other just keep it going and warm if you add cold to hot it just goes all congealed it's not a particularly nice thing so yeah just soften these nicely um, I have just chopped up some asparagus spears here and I popped them into a bowl because you add some hot stock. Spears? Do you tell me how I call them spares? I mean, spares. spears? Spares, yeah. <laughs> um, yes, so in a, in a bowl I've just added the tips, I've just uh, topped and tailed the ends and popped those to the side. Um, and then you add some hot vegetable stock to these and leave them just to sit to cook them slightly. You need one lemon halved, uh, a little bit of unsalted butter, you can use vegan butter if you want to. Um, and the only other thing that really isn't vegan is the parmesan, but you can get vegan parmesan. I've had it before. It's quite cheesy. Um, thank you. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. And you need some petit pois, so petit small peas, and a little bit of parsley. The only thing we actually didn't get in Aldi is the Borio risotto rice. And this is whole grain, and it's from uh, Whole Foods. I knew I had some, so uh, yeah. But you can just use regular Borio rice, but the whole grain one is just... A little bit nicer. It takes a lot, slightly longer to cook, but it's really good and it's um, perfect for risotto, rice, and salads. Okay, so this is the progress update with the risotto. In there, we have peas, asparagus, um, a borio rice, which has taken quite a while to cook because it's whole grain, and some vegetable stock, onions, and garlic. And I've just put the lid on to try and encourage it to cook. I know with the risotto, you're supposed to stir and stir and stir, but we're trying to encourage it to cook. I've just got more. Um, stock over there heating and then over here I've chopped some mint and some flat leaf parsley got a little bit of unsalted butter to go in towards the end some fresh lemon and some parmigiano reggiano to garnish and we need a little bit of olive oil we've been using the um, Leon olive oil and it's really really nice extra virgin it's a delicious very nice <laughs> <laughs> so this is the risotto. It took a little bit longer than we anticipated. It took us like an hour and a half to make this because it was whole grain a borio rice and it took an age. If you're going to do this, just use regular rice, guys. It's so much quicker. Um, we finished it off with a little bit of parsley, parmesan, olive oil. It just took so much stock, but um, yeah, and a little bit of butter. How many did we get for it yet? Four stock cubes. It's just mad. But it looks good, so we're going to dig in. I'll let you know what we think. Right, we're going to go in for the taste test. I really, really hope this is cooked. It does look cooked and it's absorbed so much stock. That's fine. It's not I don't the best. Think there's anything wrong with that, no, actually. it's not the best risotto we've ever done by far. But it's just got more of like a bite to it, which I guess if you're Italian is like amazing because it's supposed to be al dente. But I think that's really good actually. Mm. With the lemon and the mint, it's nice. so nice. Like the actual like sauce the and flavor. flavor. Yeah, 
definitely, we'd usually make this with pancetta, so obviously we've missed that. Just if you do, or it's just, um, both usually. Um, if you do this, just use regular white arborio rice for sure. Mm. Hello everybody, so today is Tuesday and we are having another dinner. Tonight's dinner is a really exciting one, something we've never cooked before and it's something I've definitely wanted to do for quite a while. It is veggie curry flatbread. So this is a recipe that Zara found in the Mob Kitchen book again. Uh, this is a vegetarian recipe and it uses a handful of ingredients. We're actually going to cheat a little bit. It's Brit. A little bit. It says you're supposed to make your own flatbreads, but we're not going to. Uh, but we are going to do everything else. Oh, and also the raida. We've literally just bought that too. But yeah, everything else we're going to make. Um, so you need a cauliflower. I don't know why I'm reading from the book of Busy God here. Okay, so you need a cauliflower, you need an aubergine, a sweet potato. It doesn't say to add onion, but we're going to anyway because love onion. Um, some fresh coriander, some salt, uh, which is just there. Um, some fresh gra ground black pepper, olive oil, mango chutney, uh, a little bit of tzatziki. You can make your own right here, but like I said, we just bought it from Tesco. Some almonds, these are to toast, some garam masala, some fresh coriander, uh, not fresh coriander, some coriander leaf or coriander seeds and some flatbreads which we have left over from last week which are just here. Dead easy. And we're going to have some spring rolls as well because these are vegetarian and they look delicious. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in a roasting tin, we've popped some sweet potato, which has left the skin on, onion and aubergine and some cauliflower. And then all we need to do is add some salt and pepper, so you can do that if you like. Salt, and I'm gonna do some pepper. Um, salt, this is mold and rock salt. We're adding some Leon olive oil, because this stuff is really, really good. Lots of olive oil, just to have it all roast. Perfect. And then we need to add two teaspoons of garam masala. And like I said, we aren't using coriander seeds, we're just gonna use coriander leaf, but it's all Should basically the same thing. This? Yeah, scatter it all over. Perfect. One. One. We're just adding two teaspoons of curry powder. Everything in the cupboard. Basically, yeah. Fab. We'll give all this a little toss together and then roast this for 40 minutes on a 180 degree oven. So into an oven, if you don't have a fan oven, you can just use 200 degrees, but we do have a fan, so into the oven for 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. To a dry frying pan or a skillet, we're just gonna add the almonds. We don't wanna like really toast these, but just get their flavors going in a dry frying pan. And then once that's uh, uh, toasted, take it out. And then uh, these are what we're gonna be toasting the flatbreads in. You can see it. So this is our dinner this evening. Spring rolls are definitely questionable, but you know, no, hey ho. No, we're doing like an Indian slash Chinese take. But this looks so good, it's all roasted up amazing, and the smell, so good. And we've got all of the accompaniments going on. I'll show you a finished wrap, literally delicious. And I guess this definitely could be vegan if we just didn't have the yogurt, but you can get vegan yogurt, so you could easily make this vegan. <laughs> And this is the finished product. How good does that look? Oh, Zara's already gone in for the fold. No flies on her. We will get there about your folding technique, but one day. But yeah, this looks so good. I'll let you guys know how it tastes. All right, let's go in for the taste test. Mmm. Mm -hmm. So tasty. Oh my, wow. Oh, I'd eat that again in a heartbeat. No Easy. Mmm. It's so tasty. So the good. The chutney is definitely a good shout. Literally packed full. To, oh, well, it was until I just dropped some. So good. So, today is Wednesday, and this evening's dinner, we are going to be making a speedy pesto gnocchi. And the recipe again that we are following is from Mob Kitchen, and this actually does make your own pesto. So, this is the list of all the ingredients you need. So, we need um, some pine nuts, some fresh mint, some fresh basil, parmesan cheese, one lemon, five, uh, two garlic cloves, and 500 grams of gnocchi, chard, and olive oil. However, we have completely cheated and bought our own pesto from Aldi. Where is it? There we go. Basically because we've been to the gym this evening and the time is currently 10 past eight and we still haven't eaten. So just to speed things along, we're literally gonna cook some gnocchi and we're gonna zhuzh it up. So I'll give you a list of the ingredients. So we've got some fresh basil. We have some garlic cloves, some toast, uh, pine nuts that we're gonna toast, black pepper, Parmesan cheese, potato gnocchi, pesto, olive oil, and some lemon. And that is it. Super easy. This one's a vegetarian dish, but we've got some vegan dishes coming later in the week. Mm. 
Okay, so we've toasted the pine nuts in a frying pan. I'm just going to pop those to one side. Uh, we're cooking the gnocchi. This takes two minutes to cook. Then we're going to transfer it into the pan to get it nice and crispy. Pop some pesto in there with a little bit of lemon, olive oil, and some starchy water to make like a creamy sauce. And then finish it with some black pepper and basil. And it's done. Oh. Okay, toast the pine nuts. Okay, so into a frying pan, I'm gonna add some olive oil. And then I'm gonna crush some garlic into there. Garlic? The garlic is completely optional, but just, we love garlic. Like literally, it, oh, at today, it, at lunch, I had kale in like a garlic butter. Oh, so Ooh, good. Just, just kale? Just kale, it was supposed to be, I am telling you this also, but it was supposed to be kale and broccoli, but they ran out of broccoli. So they just did um, like be a big bowl of kale and it was, Mm, Can you maybe so have that on the weekend? Yeah. We're gonna have more of a cheat meal on the weekend. Well, I had a salad for lunch. I saw that. I was disappointed. Well, because it's vegetarian. Because I wanted the um, vegan pumpkin and butternut squash linguine, but they didn't have it. I know a lot of people do say that it's easier to like get ready meals and takeouts, but like when dinner is as easy, there's no explanation. Plus, we've been and had some exercise as well, and you finish work at six. It's, it's, it's doable, And Fox. it's currently 20 past, 20 past eight. 20 which I know some people are gonna say you're eating too late, but we don't go to bed till like 10, probably don't get to sleep till 10.30. Yeah. Yeah, it's just nearly done. With a slotted spoon, just add your gnocchi into your pan. It's good to get a bit of water in as well, because that just helps you create your sauce. And the happy spoon. The happy spoon, this one, sorry, yeah. Um, and you just wanna saute the gnocchi, just to get it nice and crispy. And that is literally it. No cream, no butter, nothing like that. You can make this vegan if you were to use a vegan pesto. If you were to make your own, you could use a vegan Parmesan cheese. Um, but like I said, we just used regular pesto store bought just for speed. Now we're just going to add a squeeze of fresh lemon. Hello everybody, so today is Thursday and we are cooking a vegan dish this evening and it is again from the recipe book Mob Kitchen. I promise this is not sponsored by them, we just really like the cookbook. Today we're going to be making a bean and pepper stew but we're giving it a slight twist on the recipe and we're going to be adding some jackfruit which is completely vegan and supposed to be very similar to pulled pork in Texas. This is the can, this is from Waitrose and Partners and it uh, comes from Thailand and apparently if you cook it and pull it it's supposed to be really really delicious so yeah. Okay so for this recipe you're going to need some peppers. We've got a red pepper, a green pepper and a yellow pepper. Uh, we've got some fresh coriander. Spices, we have paprika, a little bit of chili powder, and some garlic salt. And then we have one brown onion, some garlic, fresh garlic cloves, and then you need a can of butter beans, a can of chickpeas, and a can of jackfruit. And that is literally everything. Let's get cooking. This is the recipe as well that we're gonna be doing, so hopefully by the end of the meal, we'll have something that moderately resembles this. So in a pan we've added some brown onion and we've just softened that down with a little bit of salt and olive oil and then we've added in the jackfruit and it's a good idea to start sauteing it now and then basically what we're going to do is grab a, oh, bit, oh god it's steamy, sorry, grab a masher but not now and then you like mash it or you can pull it if you have like two spoons but it just goes nice and soft um, and then we add the spices but we're going to do that in about five minutes. Okay, so we've just got the um, white tortillas here. This actually, again, wasn't in the rest, but we had these left over from the curry wraps we did. So I've just sliced them up into little segments and placed them on a baking tray. And what I'm gonna do is just drizzle them with olive oil, a little bit of salt and pepper, and then bake them for around 10 to 15 minutes, turning them over. And these will be nice homemade tortilla chips to dip into the stew. And then over here, we have added the peppers into the pan with the softened onions, and then we've added some garlic, Two, tea, uh, sorry, two teaspoons of paprika, one teaspoon of curry powder, a little bit of garlic salt, and we're just like, we're basically just stirring it down until the jackfruit becomes nice and tender. And then we're gonna add some chickpeas, and some butter beans, a little bit of tomato puree, and it should be all good to go.
this is our dinner. That literally took, I wouldn't say 50 minutes, that took maybe 20. I think it's obviously helpful that we aren't having the chorizo, but this is the jackfruit and pepper stew with chickpeas and butter beans, and I've just whipped up some spicy chili homemade tortillas. Let's dig in. Okay, so we're gonna go on for the taste test. I think it tastes nice. It's not the most flavoursome, but what's not to like. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. It's very fresh. And the jackfruit actually does look like pulled pork. Mmm. I think chorizo probably would be more flavoursome, for sure, but this is good. It's a good substitute. Hello everybody, so today is Friday and then this is the last meal that I'm gonna include in this vegetarian meal plan for one whole week. We've got five vegan slash vegetarian recipes and this one is actually 100% vegan and it's delicious. You okay? It's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this actually isn't from Mob Kitchen. This is Mr. Oliver's five ingredients and this is a vegan sticky teriyaki aubergine. So, I wouldn't necessarily say that this is like a whole, like a wholesome dinner. It's more of something you can add to, or I guess you could do it as like a side dish. But we're gonna cook some corn on the cob as well and have some aubergine and corn, and it could be really nice. So the ingredients you need is one aubergine or an eggplant, depending on where you're from. Uh, some spring onions, four spring onions, one whole chili, 20 grams of peanuts, and two tablespoons of teriyaki sauce. And this is everything that we have. So we've got the salted, roasted peanuts, an aubergine, teriyaki sauce, chili, spring onions, and this is two corn on the cob. And apparently you need a bowl of iced water, so I've already prepped that there. I think that's for when you chop these up and put the greens in, the whites in. We'll come to that in a second. Okay, put a 26 centimeter non-stick frying pan on a heat and pour 250 ml of water in half the aubergine lengthways. Okay, frying pan is a go. Heat is on. Thank you for your assistance. We're gonna do this pan for steaming the corn. I've just popped a lid on there. Probably should get a steamer. And this griddle for griddling it afterwards. Okay, first job, half this. So the pan is on, we've got it on a medium heat. So we're gonna go skin side up, so the flesh side down. So that goes straight in. Yeah. And then you add 250 ml of water. This is just straight out of the tap. Bam, baby, Perfect. Bam. Yeah. Um, Ideally, you'd have a lid that is big enough to cover that, and then we don't, so we're just going to use a baking tray. Because our leave them. new pan is not also useful. Exactly. And then you just want to season this, so you add some salt, a little bit more. This is just rock salt, and then some pepper. And then we're just going to cover that and cook it for 10 minutes. All of the water has evaporated from the aubergines. I've just added a glug of olive oil and I'm gonna add some peanuts. You can use unsalted if you want to, it's about 20 grams, and just the spring onions as well, and just leave these to nice and salty and sizzle. And the corn's still doing its thing. And this is the finished sticky aubergine with the peanuts, and all I did was, well, I actually misread the recipe, but basically the chili is supposed to let julienne, so like finely slice it, and put that in the ice cold water, and like crisps it up. Um, so yeah, this is it, and so I was literally just finishing off the corn now. You know what, I think that should be good. Me too. That looks nice and charred. Yeah, we're having it with a bit of corn on the cob. Um, we are using butter, but obviously if you were to make this completely vegan, you could use vegan butter. We actually do have vegan butter in here. Um, where is it? Yeah, it's called Vital Light. But um, yeah, it's definitely an option for sure. Guys, I'm gonna end this video here. If you have enjoyed watching five very nice, very easy, simple and tasty, Vegetarian and vegan meals. Give it a thumbs up! <laughs> and subscribe! <laughs> oh god. Um, yes, I personally, what would you say has been your top dish for this week? I'm back. Um, can I just have a round up of what we've eaten? So, Monday we had... Um, oh, the whole grain risotto. Mm. I'd say the curry wraps were my favourite. Same. Yeah, Let's delish. do top three. Curry wraps. Then I'd say... Risotto probably would have been two. nicer. No, I say risotto two and then aubergine three. three. I really love the aubergine. Would you like yeah. to make your top three? I'm going to say wraps. the pesto gnocchi was my favourite. I love the pesto gnocchi just because it was nice and creamy. Link all of the recipes down below if you want to check them out. And also if you want to let me know what your um, recipe maybe that you're going to create at home as well. That would be awesome. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed and I'll catch you guys very, very soon. Bye for now.